here we are for the third edition of the Side Hustle Side Hustle podcast, and we have Ni Norte Engman. That's a long last name. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, but had the privilege of meeting Ni, I think maybe four or five years ago, on the tax side, rolled into our office with some tax issues to get things solved because you got the side hustle going. So Ni, welcome to the show. Appreciate you, Rob. I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. Side hustle, side hustle, what's going on, y'all? I knew you'd bring it, man. I knew you'd bring it, the A-game. So you were on a webinar with us way back, maybe about two years ago when we were doing webinars. Lame, right? But we got the podcast going, thought we'd get you back on. But let's uh, dive right into the story. Ni Norte Engman, know you has some basketball background, maybe a little bit of business background in school. Give us a little bit of background before we get into what you're doing now and how you got into that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so guys, again, my name is Ni Norte. And I want to say that I'm someone who's always been a go against the grain type of person. I've always been someone who likes to do the untraditional. And so growing up, I wasn't someone who always did great in school, but sports was something that kept me rooted. Sports was something that kept me grounded. And so because I was focused and very intentional, I actually went very far with sports. But the reality is that as you know, sports, if you don't get in at a young age and if you don't get to the talent level that you need to be at at a young age, it's technically a child's dream, right? And so that's what I was told. I was told that, listen, you need to focus, get good grades, go to school, graduate college. And so that's the path that I went on. And I realized very, very quickly that the system was broken. And so when I was in a place where I was working two jobs, I was stressed out of my mind, I was looking for a solution. That's when I kind of stepped into the space that I'm in now. And I'm super grateful for everything that's happened over the past, I would say five, six years, because yeah, it's been a roller coaster of a journey. I have a little girl, she's the love of my life. And so me being a father, you know, creating a legacy is something that's super important to me. And so every decision I've made ever since she was born, she's 10 now. So ever since she was born has been for our future and and that's what drives me and that's that's what brought me here today time flies dude i remember you showing pictures of your daughter in the stroller when she was tiny so yeah it's been at least seven years because they spend the first couple of years in that stroller right unless they're clinging Definitely. onto the arm and you're showing them <laughs> off right are you doing the michael jackson over the balcony right remember that scene man that was crazy <laughs> that's insane. i mean i would never I, her mom would kill me <laughs> of course of course <laughs> So you skimmed over a little bit. I mean, you sped through things there a little bit. Let's back it up to the basketball. You uh, know, I know uh, you went pretty far in basketball, but you were pretty intense. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to have some luck with health, be on the right team, be on, you know, the right city at the mm -hmm. right time. So what happened with the basketball career? How far did you go? What level were you at? Yeah, definitely. And so, again, for me, basketball was a place where when I was young, we used to move around a lot. Right. And so I needed to find my own place that I could call home, my happy place. And Move that around. Was is that is that like side hustle for eviction or termination <laughs> notice? Or are <laughs> nah, nah, my parents so, in the military or migrants or gypsies so, so, or what? Something similar. Nah, something similar. <laughs> it's like, we're getting kicked out. Nah. <laughs> um, <laughs> My dad was a minister. And so the church that he was actually the first pastor in Canada, the, the church that he pastored for was an international church. And their goal and mission was to spread different churches across Canada. And so every three to five years, he would move to a different city and kind of set up shop, create a church, connect with the locals that were there. And then from there, you know, build up a community. And so I got to see firsthand what it took to build community. I believe that influenced me going forward to where we're at, but we'll get to that later on. And so at the time, because we were moving around a lot, I don't know if you guys that are in the audience can relate to this, but for me, I was frustrated because I had to leave my friends. I had to leave my place, every things that I knew I was building up a life. And again, it's every three to five years. So I went to three different high schools in four years, actually getting towards the end of my high school career. It started to happen quite frequently. And so basketball was the place that I could confine in when I had a ball in my hand and I was on the court, I was able to forget all the other nonsense out there. Now, that being said, prior to grade 12, my basketball career wasn't actually that great. And so I actually failed quite a bit. So I you were on the same trajectory as Michael Jordan. It was but pretty then, bad. But then what happened? But then what happened? Yeah, so we ended up moving out to Vancouver. 
And I ended up having a coach. And that's why I believe mentorship is super important because when you have a coach that believes in your potential and what you can accomplish, they're going to push you to do things that's outside of your comfort zone. And so he actually invested in a basketball camp for me. And yeah, I ended up making it. I had to try out for the camp. It was in a camp of elite people within the city of Vancouver. And so I made it, I made the cut, he paid for it. And that ultimately led me through the path of my career with basketball. And so long story short, the coach that was the owner of that camp ended up coaching for a CIS basketball team. And that's who I ended up playing for when I graduated high school. And so in my grade 12 year, prior to grade 12, I probably averaged maybe like two, four points a game. But then in my grade 12 year, I averaged yeah, you're muted. I can't hear you. Uh, but That's only two or four more points than I got. And I wasn't even playing, man. That's not very much. Exactly. That's pretty bad, dude. Exactly. There's no basketball. Uh, yeah, Fanatic, though. Fanatic, but I know two to four ain't great. I don't fee. And, and that's why, again, there's a few things that I'm going to share that really unpack why I'm so passionate about what I do now and what I believe now is because, again, I exercise certain things, certain secrets that unlocked my potential. And so my grade 12 year, I was averaging 24 points a game. I had scouts looking at me from different colleges. I ended up playing CIS, which at the time was the highest level that you can play in basketball in Canada. And so my team, our second year ended up coming second place in nationals, which is, I mean, it's a heartbreaking story because second place is like, you're the loser, but no, to no, be, you're, you're the winner. You're the winner of all the losers. It's like winner. gold for second place. That's right. That's right. That's right. You kill me, Rob. But no, I, through that whole journey and through that whole experience, what it takes to be the best got drilled in me. Right. And so there was a lot of mindset. There was a lot of repetition. Right. Because in order for you to be great, sometimes you have to focus on the little details. Right. And you can only focus on little details if you have repetition in your back pocket. Right. So there was all those things writing down your goals. One of the biggest things that changed for me between my previous three years in high school and my last year of high school with basketball was that was the first time I ever wrote on paper that I wanted to actually hit a goal related to basketball. Basketball. I wanted to be successful Five in my points or more year. per game. <laughs> Check. I wanted to win a championship. That's what that was. There about. you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and again, that's why I also believe in shooting for the moon, right? Because if you shoot for big goals, right, you might not land on your goals, right? But because your goals are so big, they're going, you're going to land amongst the stars, which is better off than staying on planet earth at all right or, or being in the sky right and so i always shoot for the moon or beyond the moon things that i know that are going to cause me to stretch out of reach and so one of those goals that i had on paper was i want to make it to the nba right and so this is me 16 17 years old and now i'm focused right and again when i believe you write things on paper I believe the universe works in weird ways. It puts people, events, and circumstances in your life to help you get to ultimately where you want to be. And so I started having coaches pop up, trainers pop up. Like I had athletes Agents, that saw- scouts, women, cheerleaders. <laughs> you kill me, bro. <laughs> Basketball players who also saw my drive and my vision and wanted to progress as well. And so we created this mastermind. And so that was the first real exposure of, again, the power of mindset and putting your intention on a goal and seeing that through to the end. But, it, yeah. it becomes contagious. It becomes contagious on the team when you set that, you know, that lead. Jordan's Definitely. done it. Gretzky's done it. All the greats do it. You know, in our office, I've always been up early, you know, an early bird. So for me, it's easy to get up early, come into the office. But a lot of people now in, in the office aspire to get here a little bit early because right. they know if they get here early, sometimes they get coffee and muffins uh, supplied for them from our favorite coffee shop downstairs at Waze. But it's it's true. All of these things that you learn in sports, and this is becoming a familiar theme from our webinars onto our podcasts it's not just athletes it's those that are in the arts and i know you play drums as well you're in the music mm -hmm. so the arts um education anybody who puts in that drive when they're younger and that's why i think i get up early we were playing hockey the only ice time we could get was on the outdoor rinks i'm dating myself mm -hmm. born in the uh mid 60s but you know the early 70s we got time on the outdoor rink at 7 a.m we're the ones who had to shovel the rink right. shovel the right. snow off play on the outdoors while all the dads sat in the truck keeping warm you know watching us practice 
crazy. I think that's where we get it. We get it from our sports background, from coaches, and aspirations uh, are set from there. So mm -hmm. when did you actually make the transition? This is uh, one of the questions we always ask. Do you remember the, the day, you know, the, the hour, the minute, the second where you said, that's it. I ain't working this J-O-B anymore. I found this side hustle passion or something that I like doing, whether it's what you're doing now or something you started in. Do you remember the day where you were when it happened? Definitely. And it's funny that you bring that up because within my community, I like to talk about what we call the line in the sand moment. When you have a moment in time where you're like, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm not going to, you know, take this anymore and i want out i want something different right and so for me there was actually a period of time where i again i was working two jobs the second job that i had was paying me more money right so i was working what were on the two jobs can you say yeah definitely i was working on film set as an actor so sometimes i would do background i would do special skills and so i was earning anywhere from 20 to 34 dollars per hour, right? Minimum eight hours. And then I was working in retail, right? So I was in retail, I was dealing with the back office, doing like shipment and, and handling all of that. And so I was getting paid just over minimum wage. The crazy thing is when I first had my daughter, I went to my boss and I asked him, I was like, hey, listen, like bills are gonna be tight. Like things are getting hard, you know, daycare is expensive. Like I'm going to, I've been in this company for like four years. I haven't asked for a raise. Like I'm, I'm going to need a raise. Is it possible that I can get a raise? And he's like, okay, well, me, I'll see what I can do. But the most that you'll probably get is 25 cents. And that broke my heart because here I am. I thought this guy cared about me and he said, broke your heart. I would have pulled out the Glock and said, yo, <laughs> mofo, 25 cents. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't be <feed>. so <laughs> 25 cents, dude. That is crazy. Insane. Why didn't he just like bitch slap you or something? <laughs> it's, insane. Like, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. It is insane. crazy, right? That that yeah. is a definite line. And was that the moment? Yeah, I mean, no. It even gets crazier. So Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, listeners, fasten your seatbelts. Here we go for the deep dive. Get the popcorn, guys. It's real. No, nah, but um, what happened was because I, the second job paid me more, my attention was just more focused on whenever they would call, I would respond, right? So now I was putting my retail job on the back burner. And because of that, he didn't appreciate that because again, my job was one that I couldn't be, I wasn't just a sales rep on the floor. I dealed with the back end, the stock. He right? wanted and you so to make him a priority for 25 cents an hour exactly exactly and so there was actually a moment in time where we were standing there in the back end and he was pissed he's like me i'm fed up with the way that you're going about handling this you're not making me a priority you know i i've been lenient but enough's and, enough you're and going he's to like to yeah you don't out. remember that conversation that started out with 25 cents <laughs> that's sense. Let's start there. Let's bring it back. Let's rewind it a bit, right? Let's rewind it. It's Man. Uh, insane. And so he was like, you know what? You need to figure this out. I was like, hey, listen, I don't want to call him by name. I was like, boss, listen, you know I have priorities. You don't want right? to call you know him by I name, but let's give, him the, let's give us his name. Like, what nah, was the you, company, dude? <laughs> you know I have priorities. Like, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. He's like, you don't have priorities. What are your priorities? I was like, what do you mean? You know, I have a daughter. He's like, you're not taking care of your priorities. I was like, what? This is- Wow. This and you're working your boss. butt off with two jobs. And I know you work hard, dude. You know, we joke around what? a lot, but I know you hustle. I know, you know, with what you're doing now, you're, you're at the grind all the time, but- that yeah. is a crazy story, dude. So yeah, keep yeah. it going. Keep it going. So yeah. So for me at that point in time, I was like, you're going to tell me that. All right, cool. I get it. And I went home, wrote up my immediate termination letter and walked in the next day and he knew what he did wrong. Right. And so like when I told him, I was like, hey, I want to talk to you because, you know, I'm I'm looking to I'm quitting. And he was like, me, nee, I think you're overreacting. I might have overstepped in our conversation, but I think you should, you know, and at the time I had this side project, I had this side hustle on the side and I saw the potential. And that was that enough, even though you got and fewer exactly. hours. I, I know the acting gig is 
Well, not personally. I mean, I, I watch a lot of movies, but, you know, I, we work with a lot of guys in the different uh, agencies and, you know, it's not regular full-time hours. You're working night shifts, you're working odd hours, but exactly. you, you had enough to keep you going, which was exactly. great. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So I decided in that moment, you know what? Boom, I'm out. The job industry is not for me. Having a boss, someone who's going to tell me when I should wake up, when I should go take a piss, when I can eat, how when high I should, you should go jump. to sleep. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, that's not the life I want to live. And I believe we are God's highest creation. And so why should we settle for, you know, the wage when we can put ideas in our minds, take some action with our two hands and feet and give value to the world that will pay us back in, in massive sums. So that's the route I decided. And, and since then, every single day, day by day, I'm working on getting 1% better and better. So yeah, that's it. It compounds. I just had this little uh, tag. I found this tag. It's It says, I wanted to send you something special, but how in the world do you send a hug? <laughs> now, there's a little story behind this. It's not related to this little hand-woven little uh, fridge magnet. But we had a woman walk into our office a few years ago, and this relays into the network marketing and affiliate marketing world. Mm -hmm. And it, it was World Hug Week or something. This is a couple of years ago. And these three women... I mean, if they were 20 years younger and a little slimmer, it might have been great. But they come into the office and they go, hey, it's World Hug Week. We're just giving out free hugs. And I'm like, eh, do I really need a hug? You know, but I'm like, OK, go for it. They're like, yeah, hug, free hug, free hug. And then me being the math prodigy that I am, I mm -hmm. said, how many days would it take for you ladies to give everybody a hug in the world if you spread the word? So, me, if you went out, for example, in your network marketing agency and you recruited three people and you mm -hmm. showed them how to repeat that, how to bring somebody on board, you know, mm -hmm. give them the training. Because I was in a big network marketing company, financial service company, World Financial Group for a couple of years. How many days if you train three people and then they went out and trained three people each? How many days before everybody in the world would be on your downline? That's a good question. How many? Hey, you I'm the host. Me? I'm asking the questions, dude. <laughs> it just take a wild guess. Year, I would say year, like, a month, a week, what you know? I would say like a year. Yeah, I would say a year. Yeah, 30 days, dude. 30 days? Three to the power of 27 is over 10 billion. So it, it would happen on about the 27 and a half day mark. If you train three people, now I've done this on a spreadsheet. I've done it on the financial calculator. I've computed it in my Einstein genius mind. It was pretty quick. I figured it was, you know, less than two months, but when I was surprised. So wow. that's the power that's of network crazy. marketing. That's crazy. It is insane. It's so ironic. I found this today knowing that you were coming on. I, I said, I got to keep this and bring up that story. That's epic. Yeah. What, if you think about it, there's a quote that says like, we're only seven degrees away or six degrees away from, you know, anybody in the world. Right? Well, look like, at look at Jesus. Didn't he have a dinner some one time? The last dinner, the last supper, Jesus and, and the 12 yeah. disciples. Yeah. Right. See, right. Jesus only went 12 wide and look at his hierarchy now. That's right. Right. Half the planet. Yeah, that's right. So let's get into what you're doing now. Let's, you know, time to promote, time to promote uh, Ni Norte. Let's go. Let's go. So, yeah, I've, I've started and founded a company, a movement called the New Rich Syndicate. And what we've done is we actually partnered with a company, a global company based out in Japan that created this biotechnology that's able to turn tap water into what's called alkaline water. And so for those of you that are familiar with alkaline water, nowadays people all over the world are understanding the power and the health benefits of drinking hydrogen rich alkalized water. And so people are going crazy. This product is in high demand. And what we do is we show people how they can leverage social media leverage affiliate marketing strategies and leverage new network marketing strategies because it's not about traditional it's not about hitting up your friends and family it's not we don't do any of that leveraging social media with billions of people at our fingertips we're able to find what we like to call our itchy buyers and show them the value that we have to offer and if they like what they see they make a decision for themselves and yeah it's been incredible we've been able to scale this business to well over seven figures and so right now we're with the organization that i have i have well over a thousand units which works out to be around two three million dollars in revenue um and yeah we're not slowing down anytime soon we're pedal to the metal and this company is scaling fast as well too so it's incredible and to see. I ironically our company you know, for those who do a little digging can find out what we do. I make the listeners dig a little bit to find out. We're not, not going to let the cat out of the bag because, you know, the spotlight's on the guests. 
but our company actually replicated what you do. So leave the product aside, phenomenal product, liquid gold, I call it, but leave mm. the product aside. It's the process and the process en encompasses mm. some social media It encompasses some things called funnels, you know, mm. some videos. So a lot of different skills go into, you know, leave the product out completely. What mm. are the skills that you teach people coming into the new rich syndicate? Sounds like a mob scene, dude. It's... It is. Think of it as like the round table where you have people who are leaders and shakers, people who are hustlers and go-getters that are all coming together to mastermind and, and create the, the big vision. But yeah, the skill set that we teach is actually boiled down to three things. Number one, lead generation. Because what we found is that the life of your business is going to be based on how many customers, how many leads you have flowing through the door. And so I like to call it your oxygen of your business, right? The more leads that you have, the more people that you have reaching out saying, hey, I'm interested. I, I'm curious as to what you have to offer, the better your business is going to do overall, right? And so what we do is we show people how they can leverage social media without being salesy, without being put like just spammy posting your links all over the place where they can market themselves advertise themselves in a way that brings value that piques curiosity and then from there once they have somebody that says okay i'm interested then they walk them through a process so now the second thing that we teach is sales right so because hold on the first the first thing you know i started out a little bit before you you know, I got that mm. 196 something at the beginning of my, my birth date, which really hurts every time I look at it. But I remember when we were starting out, it was early 2000, 2001, and we had uh, our social media was business cards. Mm. I went to a big business training event. My business partner at the time brought me to this event. There was about 150 seats. And I went around putting my card on all the seats before the event. Everybody's at the back. And I'm thinking, hey, I'm great. And one of the guys running the events comes over and he kind of comes up he didn't want to embarrass me he says hey rob i'm like yeah he goes that's spammy dude so i was going back grabbing all the cards off the chairs <laughs> as quick as i could yeah. grabbing those cards back off the chairs but you know that's where the light bulb went off and then we've actually replicated some things that people in your organization mm -hmm. are doing mm -hmm. we're using social media we're using funnels we're using crms etc mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so that's number one where do you go to next after that? I guess lesson two, right? Yeah. So lesson two is sales and sales funnels, right? So with sales, sales is just a process of communication, right? And being able to convey an idea to someone that allows them to absorb the idea, digest the idea, and then take the idea for themselves, right? As this is a good idea, right? And so a lot of the times there's a lot of misconceptions around sales where it's like, oh, you either gotta be that slimy car salesman or that door-to-door -door salesman. Robert De Niro <laughs> car salesman, yeah. Yeah, exactly, He's exactly. Got three <laughs> bodies in that trunk, yeah. Remember <laughs> that scene? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when that's not it at all, right? Like sales is everyday communication. You're selling when you're speaking to your kids. You're selling when you're speaking to your friends. When you're trying to decide what to eat for dinner, that is a sales process, right? And so being yeah, able to- Yeah, when you talk to your wife, you're just sold. <laughs> like this, you don't do any selling to the wife, right? You have to sell her to stay with you. If you don't sell her to stay with there you, you go. she's gonna leave a thousand percent. It's one sale to get her, it's another sale to keep her, right? And so nah, the process of sales, and that's why I love it. And that's why I love educating people on it because it's a life skill set. It's not a, just about making money, right? And when you can understand that, again, by piquing somebody's curiosity, giving them value, showing them that, okay, this is the benefits of why you should do this. And, and this is how it's gonna play out for you. And let's future pace, let's talk about one year Year, three years, five years down the road, seeing yourself using this product, what is your life going to be like? What's going to happen for you? And again, it's not about the product. It's about the process. And when you're able to understand this process, you can attach any product to it as long as it's something that gives value. And again, I recommend please do not use this stuff for evil because it could be right. This could be used for wrong. Use this for good and you will change a lot of lives like selling vaccines, right? It could be used for evil. Exactly. 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 We're not going to get into that just in case we get bad. We don't want to get bad right now. Nobody's but, getting uh, banned, but you know, one no, of one no, of the no, pharmaceutical companies made a hundred million dollars in 2021 off of one vaccine. Now, I don't know about you, but if, if I was selling bikes and the first bike came off the uh, assembly line and it didn't work, I don't know how many more bikes you would sell. So you have to have a good product. Going back to the product you were talking about, right, that you guys offer as your end product, 
You know, it's mm-hmm. a big ticket item and in the industry is considered a big ticket item. So step number three, what's step number three, close and deliver? Or- <laughs> step number three, nah, because that's part of sales. You can't have sales without closing. What? Okay. That's impossible. You got to be able to close in the sale. So with sales, there's that's also our sales funnel process, right? So for those of you guys who are my online marketers, or if you're not an online marketer, I want to talk a little bit about sales funnels before I go into step number three, because step number three, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that. But with sales, sales is a process. It's a sales process, right? Educating people. And so what I've actually found working in retail was when somebody would come into the store, you would have somebody greet the individual, right? And say, hey, listen, so today we have this on promo. This is what's going on. I know you came here. How can I serve you? Right? And so now you're inquiring information about the customer. And by doing that, it gives you the ability to now point them in the direction. And so what I found is that when you take the same process online, it completely changes the buying experience for customers. Because if you look at the traditional way people are selling online, people are selling using clunky big websites, right? Websites with a lot of pages that have so many different options that have multiple different directions that a customer can go on that it's not streamlined and it makes the buying decision very confusing, right? And so I discovered a process called sales funnels online leveraging a company called click funnels and they created a process where you can allow your customer journey to be extremely streamlined and be super what i like to call one dimensional right so by providing them information on a page you give them the decision to either continue on the customer journey or they can close off and you know exit the sales process right and so in our sales training section we also educate on how sales funnel works how they can fill up their sales funnel and essentially have sales coming in on the other side. So let's step back for a sec. So part of your offer, not an offer, but opportunity, I would more call it, is uh, somebody coming into the new rich syndicate. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they get this training on the side. They can apply this to any product or service or the product or service that they're currently offering. So, you know, I I learned this early reading up on podcasts. We got to interject here, Nee, and real quickly, how do people get a hold of you first, right, before we go on you know and we'll, we'll drop the links in the comments but uh, let's give it to them definitely you can find me on socials i love social media i'm very active on socials so my instagram is ni norte underscore angwin and then my facebook is ni norte angwin as well and so you'll be able to i uh, reach out I'm, I'm super open so knee as in head and shoulder knee and toes knee and toes or it's so spelled it's, differently correct it's N-I-I. spelled differently you yeah, put the hyphen right. in, semen or just knee norte? There's no hyphen in it. Yeah, just knee norte. Yeah, we'll have it in the links anyway. For those that are listening in on the podcast, for those watching the video, have a good chuckle because, you know, me and knee have a good time cutting the jokes, but trying to keep it, you know, straight and narrow for the listeners so they can get some gold out of this. Definitely. So you talked a bit about click funnels, et cetera. Let's stop it there. If they want to know more, they got to reach out to you. Don't give them number three yet. So sure. let, let's hold hold them up there. You know, you got to reach out to Nee and at least get an intro call with him. Find out what, more about what he's all about. What about the tech stack? You talked about ClickFunnels, but what else wraps around ClickFunnels? You know, payment processors, uh, email Definitely. systems. Definitely. A little bit about the tech stack for those who are starting out thinking, you know, contemplating which software to use. Definitely. And so I've, I'm a huge fan. And again, massive shout out to ClickFunnels, but I've actually migrated my system over to a new platform called Go High Level. And the reason why is because they have an all-in-one encompassing platform where you actually get the auto responders, you get the email marketing, you get the funnel building, you get the courses, everything all dialed in there. So right now I'm integrating a lot into go high level. And so I highly recommend if you want to be, you know, ahead of the curve, if you want to be innovative, definitely look into go high level. Are they giving out those 10 X plaques? So is go high level giving out plaques? They are not giving out plaques. You're not going to get the community that you see. We're, we are using go high level as well. We got introduced to it. And the reason why we're using it is because of our franchisees. We're an accounting system that, you know, offers franchise systems and it takes care of the CRM for all of our franchise franchisees and they each have mm-hmm. their own instance of the software so that's great you can use it for your downlines or for licensees mm-hmm. exactly awesome but we actually signed up for click funnels and yours truly ni norte helped us uh, set it up and we got somebody a full timer on it now we actually went with click funnels just for one funnel to get the plaque 
That's our whole goal. And if you want information on what we're doing there, reach out in the links below. If you're a company or entrepreneur doing half a million or more a year, reach out to us. We'll see if we can get you on the program. Definitely. So some other software that I use, Zoom has saved my life. All my sales is done through Zoom. So we are using Zoom right now. Exactly. Exactly. And I had to take a look up, make sure we're recording this so we don't have to repeat, right? (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, again, the power of seeing the people that you're communicating with, they can also see you see your facial expressions being able to share screen it again completely changes the sales process rather than being over the phone and just having to hear it through tonality they can see you they can feel you and it makes the process well, a lot they can more see enjoyable. you i don't know if they can feel you yet online but that's that's coming out next <laughs> we're staying away from that we're staying away from yeah that. I, it is I, happening I, though i think gates and zuckerberg are working on something so they can feel each other well the goggles <laughs> just don't do it for bill you know so it's not enough they're coming out with some gloves the goggles going but yeah you gotta have those gloves don't tell me white gloves too right <laughs> white they gloves. can't be black either they should be like blue or something make no, no some those will get you in trouble it's the white gloves <laughs> yeah, you know i'm yeah. making the reference to mj right with the i know gloves. i know that's why we don't want it to be white either come on we need something yeah else. we'll stay away from the gloves but hey <laughs> you know to, to tone it down a bit those that are listening on the podcast here on one of the channels if you want to see the video you know see that big contagious grin that he's got going half the time and some visuals we have these uh, for replay on the youtube channel as well so just you know again in the links below if you're uh, listening you can't see me pointing down but i am pointing down for those listening right you can envision my fingers pointing down and i know you can do it just visualize right you got zoomed i'm sure you use that for all your team meetings for your training yeah. recording podcasts etc exactly. it's got the built-in recording feature exactly zoom literally has saved my life i run my whole business through it from everything to from go lives and I even live stream with Zoom and then actually stream it into Facebook just because it gives me more capabilities and and more features. And you hit the nail on the head. When you can see somebody, we do our sales calls on Zoom. When people want to, you know, phone in for a phone in meeting, like what century were you born in, dude? Like, let me send you the Zoom link or we'll send somebody over to train you. Like if you can't get on Zoom, you know, I really don't think we can work together. Exactly. But there's a 90% chance more of closing if you're on video. Exactly. You know, in per- there's nothing like in person, but times have changed. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we've converted to a 100% virtual tax firm mm-hmm. and financial services. We work with clients across Canada. I mean, Let's if I had go. to jump on a plane every time somebody called, that would oh, be insane. So you got Zoom, <laughs> you got right. uh, ClickFunnels. So let, let's go with one more. One more Stripe. for payment processor. Yeah. Why Stripe? Um, I love Stripe just because of the simplicity of it. It's super user friendly. Yes, their fees are a little bit high in terms of what you pay per transaction, but it's free for you to sign up. You don't actually have to pay for you to sign up. You only pay when a transaction happens. It's just like massages, right? It's worth the extra, right? Exactly. It's worth the extra on top. You got to get the oils. <laughs> Fermented oils. <laughs> you you have the scented oils and the candle going in the back, right? Dopey with the hot rocks. <laughs> yeah. And then the warm towel at the end. Okay. This is a PG podcast let's uh time to dial it back time to dial it back so you got stripe for payment processor you got click funnels for the funnel and it does a lot of other things in there it was number yeah, three then, again go high level yeah go high level and then for autoresponders for those of you guys that are still looking for maybe an autoresponder that works really well i leverage get response again get response phenomenal processor you're able to get your whole workflow your whole automation flow in there you can see the customer journey again the user experience is very visual so i'm a visual learner i like to see the path that people are going to be on and so yeah it it allows me to create and then from there it's just plug and play so and all of these integrate into either click funnels or go high level as well so so we'll get those links in the uh description or bio below you know if, if you have affiliate link for those need we'll get those in there because i know go high level has one make sure Definitely. and get your links in there so you get credit for them you Definitely. know for being a guest we're going to talk about a couple books now for the listeners but before we do that a quick story on zoom we offered a service to the national mortgage broker channel through a company called finastra so mr taxes.ca forward slash finastra you can see about the partnership they're a okay. five billion dollar u.s cap company they manage probably half the world's banking 
lending software, and they manage 600 mortgages a year in Canada through their platform. And when we formed our partnership, they were doing a presentation on the new service, which was on the back end of their website. And I tried signing up. This is our service that we're providing to them. And he said, yeah, just go sign up for the webinar and we'll get you on the chat. So I go to sign up and I can't sign up. It says it's full. So I talked to him later. He was on our webinar. You can see it on our, one of our YouTube uh, videos there, Ryan mm -hmm. Spence. But he said, I called him and I said, Ryan, what's going on? He goes, well, we cap out at 100. He said, we just pay for the basic Zoom plan. And like, how big is your company again? You can't spring for the extra 49 bucks a month. They have unlimited guests on your Zoom channel. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys thinking? You guys could develop your own Zoom software. Like exactly. this is one of the biggest tech companies in the world. And they didn't want to spring for the extra, you know, 40 bucks a month for a, a Zoom channel. But like we use a, a software called Cinder, S-Y-N-D-E-R. I think it's Indian just by the name, you know, all the development over there, but it's a integration platform between QuickBooks. So it's a, in between QuickBooks and Stripe, it's the integration to pull all your transactions in so you don't have to re-enter names and everything. Uh, and we were spending like two, three hours a month wow. integrating all the data or and during tax season, maybe 10 to 15 hours a month. Yeah. And, wow. you know, I finally looked into it 49 bucks a month and I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? You know, how much is your time worth an hour? Exactly. So some people, I heard this great expression. Some people focus on the donut. And mm -hmm. some people focus on the whole. You know, I was looking at the 49 bucks a month. Ben Astra was looking at the 62 bucks a month for Zoom. You know, yeah. we all have tech that we want to add on. Take the mm -hmm. plunge. That's my advice to listeners. My little bit of advice is, you know, risk versus reward. What does it cost you not to have the software? And how much extra time can you be focused on making video, doing content, doing editing? Spending mm. time doing Zooms for your team. Exactly. Yeah. So books, Nee, we always ask our uh, our guests, you know, what, what kind of books inspire them? Maybe something for the listeners. Yeah, for sure. First book I would say is definitely, it's called Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Now, this book is, I would say, like, if you look at Napoleon Hill and his work, Napoleon Hill is someone who we call him the godfather of personal development just because of his book, Think and Grow Rich. And mm -hmm. so... The book Outwitting the Devil goes deep into the psychology of what happens when you're on your journey to success, right? So a lot of the times there are going to be challenges that come up, right? There are going to be things that come in our way to stop us, slow us down. Like right? people and jumping from your team. I know you went you went uh, incognito there for a while definitely, because of that. Definitely. Definitely. People jumping from your team, people bad mouthing you, people trying to steal your sales. Like th things are going to go wrong. Right? Stealing you, your, copying your, family. your brand, stealing yep. your database. I've had it all happen. Everything you've mentioned, I think, has happened to us. Yeah. And so what Napoleon talks about is that in those times, we get introduced to someone that, that's called your other self, where it causes you to stretch, causes you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Because usually like in those get out moments- get a big stick, like the guy that tried to steal our database. I, I was trying to find a big stick so I could whack him over the head with it. Yeah. I'm not allowed to do those types of things. Exactly, exactly. And it's like with stealing, stealing our clients, like I had to bring on a meeting and bring in the big guns and like, yo, what are you doing? Like, we, this is not how we conduct business. Like you're supposed to be someone who's a partner, right? So yeah, was it in a back alley in a warehouse that you had that meeting? Or <laughs> I wish it was, it should have been. <laughs> no, nah, nah, but uh, it's, it's funny, because, again, like understanding that this stuff is going to happen. And knowing that it's going to happen normalizes it on your journey so that when it does happen it's like you're not taken back by it and and for me like i was taken back like rob knows like this is the first time that i've had somebody literally come into my organization and, and rip people out of my organization and for yeah, me you went off the radar we were chatting about some stuff and you disappeared for a bit and yeah. then you came back so i 100 percent understood what you were going through yeah. because it's gut-wrenching you know, especially exactly. if it's a big member of your downline. So, it's, exactly. you know, it's important to keep people happy on your team, constant meetings with them, you know, the engagement for all those reasons. Exactly, exactly. And so this book talks about the nuances of it. It talks about vices, different vices that as you get successful, there are things that are going to come up, right? And how to avoid those vices, right? And so phenomenal book. I definitely, definitely recommend it. That would be the first. The second one I would say is Mastery by Robert Greene. So Robert Greene, I love Robert Greene, Robert Green work. He's the author of your 48 Laws of Power. Now the 48 Laws of Power, it's a little bit of a dark book. Like the concepts that are shared, I don't really condone, 
but I mean, it's a good read, but Master 40, 48 read. is a little much for me. I, you know, I kind of like the top four or top 10. I like those, but 48, dude, like how many chapters does it come in? <laughs> it's a big book. It's a big book. It's a big book. Yeah. And it comes in 48 chapters. That's what it is. And how he has it broken down. Yeah. Is that because he's a historian. That's what he is by trade. And what he did was he decided to go back in time and find out, you know, what created success, what creates power, you know, what, what gets people to be influencers based on historical events that have happened in the past and then he'll archive it together and then see the synchronicities that align and then give you the theories behind it and so in his book mastery he talks about what it actually takes to become a master at any given craft and the journey that an individual must go through and so you learn about the apprenticeship phase and how in order for you to have success you need to be an apprentice and i feel like the apprentice in society nowadays is like a dead it's a lost art right you're not hearing a lot of people being like oh i want to be an apprentice right but that's important right well, like for simon you... sinek says people get on the job and they want free food and bean bags exactly you know and arcade machines Exactly, exactly. When are you going to do some work? Exactly. And so learning what the work is, how to be productive, how to create and whatever your craft may be, it might be music. Like for me as a musician, I had to have a music teacher. My music life didn't change until I found a music teacher. Right. And so being an apprentice is important. And then he talks about stepping out on your own, right? There's going to be a time where you need to actually break off from your mentor and everybody who is great, anybody who has been successful has had to, in a sense, get booted from the nest and spread their wings and fly, whether it's by their demand or whether it's by the demand of the mentor, right? And so super important knowing this, right? Because that means you have to prepare as you are an apprentice, you're preparing of okay if I'm on my own how would I handle this situation right and then from there once you're in that state of okay you're on your own now you're getting into mastery which is literally honing your this is where experience comes into play right because there's no better teacher than experience either the experience of others or the experience that you go through yourself but your own hard-earned experience with your two hands two feet your mind yeah there's nothing that beats that and that's what allows you to get to that place of mastery and so phenomenal book that's book number two book number three you couldn't hype book number two up a little bit more or what? Like, that was pretty hype, dude. <laughs> nice. I'm glad. I'm that glad. was good. Number three, you got it right there? I got it right here. The Magic. The Magic by Rhonda. Rhonda Barnes. And this book right here, it's a book that I got introduced to by my mentor. And what he was talking about was the lost art of gratitude, right? A lot of people don't realize the magic of gratitude. And in this book, it talks about what you are grateful for, you're going to get more of. And what you are ungrateful for, you are going, it's going to be taken away from you, right? And when I heard that and I looked back in my life, I realized that they're absolutely right. Like the things that I was grateful for, right? Whether it's time with my family, whether it's, you know, my health or waking my skill up in set, the morning, definitely. I would get more of those and the things that I wasn't grateful for, like maybe I had a girlfriend and I didn't appreciate her at the time, or maybe I was in school and, you know, there was a friendship that I just, you know, I didn't appreciate them. It would end up where we would fight and we would separate and they wouldn't be in my life anymore. And so it just, this concept just became so real that the practice of gratitude brings the magic of life. And so it talks about things of like being grateful for things that you are going to accomplish, right? And so you might have some outstanding bills. And that's one of my favorite practices in this book is like, maybe you have an outstanding bill that you want to pay on that bill, you're going to write thank you for paying this bill off. Thank you for this bill being paid in full. Thank you for the money that's going to pay this bill in full. Yeah, don't I, don't press the alarm on I want it in small unmarked bills. Yeah, that's <laughs> Actually, there's a funny story where uh, my mentor, he actually leveraged this. And when the money came in, that's exactly what he did. Small bills went to his, I think it was like 8,000 or something, $10,000 in debt. Walked over there, dropped the briefcase. I think you have a similar story as well. That you I had a client me paid me like 3,600 bucks in toonies and loonies. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, and it all came from a laundromat that he did work for and the guy owed him money. So of course the guy had, you know, buckets and buckets of toonies and loonies. They were all rolled, but man, they were heavy. It was heavy. <laughs> for sure. I could only imagine carrying that around the Yeah, story about gratitude. I got to give a shout out to Gary Morris from Dominion Lending. 
you know, the founder of Dominion Lending and, and they sold out, they went public. It's a $150 million company now, et cetera. They had, who was it? Don Cherry is their, their spokesperson for a couple of years doing the commercials. And we were, you know, launching this service to mortgage brokers. We were starting out with this service and somehow got a, a meeting with Gary. He was willing to meet us over by his office. We did it there because we knew he was busy. And he mm. came in about 10 to 15 minutes late. It was at Shaughnessy and New in um, Port Coquitlam across the head office. And he comes in and he said, hey guys, I was there with a friend, Darren Jacklin, who I'll give a shout out to as well. He's with, what's the new EXP uh, Realty? He's on their board of directors now. So two high level guys. Nice. And me and Darren were there waiting and Gary came in about 15 minutes. He goes, guys, I really have to apologize he said, you guys go ahead and order. He said, I'll look at the menu. And then throughout the lunch, he was he was just grateful. He said, you know, thanks so much for coming out here to meet with me. And, you know, as we were talking at lunch, it, like every 10, 15 minutes, he would interject some type of gratitude. It was part of his vocabulary. Mm. And man, it still resonates with me. And then, you know, over the past 10 years, I hear other people doing it. And then I know he got that somewhere, whether it was mm. from a book or coaching or training, you know, and then we found out during the lunch that he was late because he was closing a $600 million financing deal for demand minion lending for their B lending credit. So I'm like, wow. yeah, okay, 15 minutes, I guess we can let it slide, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 600 million. And then he's sure. like, and then it's not like he sneaks out and pays the bill or anything. He said, guys, you know, I got to apologize again. He said, let me take care of lunch, you mm. know? So like just gratitude throughout the whole meeting. And then over the years had many chats with him here and there, you know, maybe a dozen over the 10 years about different things, looking at different mm. services to provide for them, you know, reach out to him and see if it's something that works. And he's, he's always grateful. Like, yeah. you know, a guy with that much money and that busy still has the time to reach out to all his brokers, uh, et cetera, and, you know, still be humble. Yeah. And again, there's something magical about that. Like, like I strongly believe that the more you are grateful for, the more that you're going to be blessed with. And so there's no doubt in my mind that he's as successful as he is. If it's a, it's not even just a daily practice or a practice that he does in the morning, it's something that he does every minute as he's being, he's probably very conscious of it, which uh, it's phenomenal. Yeah, and since then they bought up uh they bought up two more brokerages, you know. So it's wow, it's crazy, you know, the the size that you can grow. And I'm just looking up here. Yeah, they bought mortgage architects and the mortgage center over the years, you know, another couple, mm -hmm. whatever it is, you know, multiple eight figures for, for those companies. Wow. So it allows you to, to do those Beautiful. things. Yeah. So Hondo P the magic. Guys, definitely recommend it. Gratitude. So three great Huge. books. We'll have those in the, uh, again, in the links below. I must have said that a dozen times, but there'll be lots of stuff in the links. That's where the magic is. For you know, sure. below. Just follow up on this stuff. Follow up with me. Yeah, there you go with the drum. So we'll have to try and get some, some reels interjected in here with some of your drum rolls. Right. Let's get some sure. video in on the video side for the YouTube channel. But for, you know, for the podcast channels, we'll get some audio in there. Maybe we'll pirate some of your music for a closing tune. The outro. Hey, let's go. Yeah, the outro. And then here comes. Yeah. 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 Here comes the lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> here comes the lawyers. So anything you want to finish off on? We're, we're coming up to a close here. Me, yeah, what do you, for sure. you know, I mean... people in the affiliate marketing, network marketing, agency world, online marketing doing a side hustle could be anything on the side, you know, some last pieces of, of advice. Yeah, I, I would say the biggest thing for me that has been the needle mover in my life has been focusing on mindset first. Anytime I focused on strategy first, anytime I was looking for tips and tricks that would, you know, give me the latest shortcut, I felt like I was hitting a wall. I would, things would be end off worse. It would be worse off than it was when I first actually implemented that strategy. You got to so, unwind stuff and start over again. Exactly. So what does somebody do to create or to develop that mindset? So first and foremost, visualization is key, right? Visualize the things that you're actually seeing huge and like what you want to do is you want it to be in your imagination you want to visualize in your imagination rather than like watching something or looking at pictures because that's when you're actually training your mind the second thing is affirmations daily every single day and I feel it in my body I wake up and I tell myself who I am right and the reason why is because sometimes you have to trick your brain into believing what it is that you are and then from there it allows you to get yourself into action and do the things as if you are that individual. And so let me give you an example. When I was broke, busted and disgusted, had no money in my bank account, right? Literally, I was telling myself that I was making $10,000 days. I was
was making $10,000 months. I would have $10,000 months. And I would look at myself in the mirror, stare at myself in my eyes and say, Nee, I am happy and grateful now because I have $10,000 in my bank account. I am happy and grateful now because I have $10,000 in my bank account. And once you say it enough, you start to actually feel your physiology change, right? Especially if you can see the money in your mind. You feel your physiology change. You feel yourself get excited. And I would do it to the point of that state. And then from there, I would go take some action. And it's crazy what happens when you put yourself into state. Uh, Tony Robbins talks about it all the time, that the state that you're in determines a lot of your results that you're going to get out of life, right? And so when you're able to put yourself in state, magic happens. And that's what I do. So affirmations is huge. Visualizations is huge. And then again, going back to gratitude, right? You can't forget gratitude. Being grateful for where you are now. Now, for the opportunities that have been placed in front of you and for the actions that you're taking to get you to where you want to be, having that as a staple in your life will allow you to deal with all the other BS that comes your way because you know that at the end of the day, you being even where you're at in itself is, you know, a miracle. So um, those would be the three things, you know, when it comes to mindset, being able to mold your mindset that I would say focus on daily and you'll start to see magic happen. I did it for basketball. I did it for music and it worked. I played at the highest level that I could ever play in basketball in Canada for music. I've played across stages all over the Canada, all over the States. I've played with some of the biggest artists. Um, yeah. And it's been incredible. And now I'm applying the same principles when it comes to business. And now I'm rubbing shoulders with some of the giants out here in industry um, in Vancouver and on the internet. And so well, guys, hey, I highly, highly podcast. recommend it. You're on our podcast. Exactly. So there you go, uh, dude. Dopey. Somehow you snuck in. So some giants like Rob Stone, baby. Let's go. <laughs> no, we're going to let the cat out of the bag. So he's actually going to be a co-host here on our upcoming podcast. We have uh, three co-hosts, Quentin Carlin, Jesse Garnier from Next Level Marketing and uh, Ni nee from The New Rich. And I was going to say, you know, when you get big and people start knocking you with memes, you know, you've made it right. So we knocked exactly. Ni nee with uh, the old rich meme. We had a picture of some of the old guys in, in the same logo and stuff. So we'll put some of those on the outtakes here and have a good laugh. But reach out to me, nice. find out what they got to offer with the new Rich and, and the side hustle they got going. And we'll see you guys at the top. Let's go. And again, Rob, I want to thank you so much. Side Hustle, Side Hustle podcast. Y'all are out here learning from the best. Again, Rob, appreciate you having me out. I'm looking forward to all the amazing things that we're going to be doing together in the future. And I hope you listeners got some massive value you from this go out there continue to be epic be great and let's kick some butt with your side hustle let's go